In this video, we are going to be looking at VLANs. First, we are going to look at the origin of VLANs. Then, we are going to look at the function of VLANs. And finally, we are going to look at how VLANs work in a network environment. So, let's get started. To look at the origin of VLANs, we have to first look at what LANs are. A LAN is what is called a local area network. An example of a local area network is what we have here. In this network, we have three switches, and we have computers connected across the three switches. Now, the thing about this network is that, first, the whole network is just one broadcast domain, despite the fact that we have three switches, and each port in every switch is a collision domain. The whole network is one broadcast domain. And what that means is that it's going to be one IP network. So, for instance, we could have one subnet of 192.168.1.0/24 across this whole network, and each device can communicate with each other because they are on the same layer two network. And what that means is, when any device wants to communicate with the other, all it needs to do is try to send an ART message for the other device's MAC address. And once it gets the MAC address, it can start sending frames. So there's really no segmentation of this network. And in order to segment the network and divide the broadcast domain, we have to introduce a router to divide this side of the network from this side of the network. And when we do that, then this becomes one broadcast domain. And this other side becomes another broadcast domain. So technically, when you have switches connected together, they're all in one broadcast domain. And until you have a router, you cannot segment them. That is the standard of LANs. So what is a VLAN? A VLAN is what is called a virtual LAN. So it's a logical segmentation of LANs on switches. So when you have a switch with two VLANs, you can have two broadcast domains on that switch. So what are the functions of VLANs? The first function of the VLAN that we're going to look at is a logical segmentation according to the functions and rules. So if you have this network and we want to segment it into two different VLANs for admin users and for regular users, we can have this computer being an admin, this also an admin, this is an admin, and these other two being users. What this means is that on each of the switch, we have to create two different VLANs, one for the admin and one for the user, so that we would segment the broadcast domains on the two switches. That means that the admin will become one logical network and the user will become another logical network. So that's how it works with VLANs. So when you have a virtual LAN, you're pretty much having a virtualized switch. That's like two switches or more than two switches in one switch. So we have the physical switch, and then we have virtual LANs inside of the switch. So it's some form of virtualization of the LAN to have multiple logical LANs inside one physical switch network. Another function of VLANs, as we mentioned before, is that it segments broadcast domains, which means that it can be used to contain the broadcast. For instance, if this computer admin tries to send a broadcast, it's only going to go to this other admin, and this admin is not going to go to the users because it's been segmented, and this is very important for security. An example of where VLANs are important for security would be when you have something like a virus that attacks the network, and the virus is trying to replicate itself on multiple users. If this continues on broadcast domains, then usually only those computers in that broadcast domain can be affected by the virus. Another example where VLANs can be used for security is when you have broadcast messages like the ARP messages and DHCP messages that are sent across the network. If you have a computer that is a rogue computer, for instance, if you have this computer that's a rogue computer and it's in the user's VLAN and it's trying to affect ARP and DHCP messages, what happens is that this row computer can only affect computers that are in the user's VLANs and can see their ART broadcast and can see their DHCP broadcast and then can try to perform and manage a middle attack or can perform a sniffing attack 
or any kind of attack on the VLAN where it's located, but these users in the admin VLAN would be safe because the rogue computer is not in their broadcast domain and cannot see the broadcast that are sent across the switch. So even though the broadcast gets across the switches, but the fact that they are in different VLANs helps to contain the broadcast and helps to give a measure of security to VLANs that have not been compromised. Another function of VLANs is quality of service. Quality of service is when you try to determine the kind of service that different profiles of devices on a network will have. For instance, if we have phones that are connected on this network and they are on their own VLAN. We know that for phones, we need to communicate voice and voice traffic is very sensitive to speed. So what we can do is we can increase the quality of service for the phones by giving the phones priority to be sent across the network first before data traffic. And one of the ways we can do that is by using the VLANs to differentiate between data and voice traffic. If they were all on the same broadcast domain on the same IP network, then it would be really difficult to be able to perform quality of service for one set of traffic. Now, let's briefly look at how VLANs work in a network environment. So try to divide the network into VLANs. And here we have VLAN 1, which is represented in blue. VLAN 2, which is represented in black. And VLAN 3, which is represented in red. When a device in a particular VLAN tries to send a message across the switch, the switch notes the VLAN that the frame comes in from and tries to make sure that it only sends the frame out of ports that are in that VLAN. So for instance, if a message comes in from this port and it's on VLAN 1, The switch makes sure that you only go to ports that are on VLAN 1. So what it does is it checks the destination MAC address, as we've learned before, and tries to check for the destination port. The other thing it tries to do is make sure that the destination port is also on VLAN 1. If the destination port for the MAC address is not on VLAN 1, then it would just drop the frame. So how does it know which ports are on which VLANs? There are actually two types of ports on a Cisco switch. We have what is known as an access port, and what is known as a trunk port. An access port is a port that is assigned to one VLAN typically. So for instance, here you have this port would be an access port on VLAN one, while this port would be an access port on VLAN three, and this port would be an access port on VLAN two, and then this port would also be an access port on VLAN three. What about the ports that are used to connect different switches together? Those ports are known as trunk ports, and trunk ports are ports that can carry multiple VLANs. So you can send more than one VLAN across a particular trunk port. And the way you do this is through what is called tagging. And some other vendors like HP, 3Com, D-Link, the trunk ports are called tagged ports. So in case you have to configure a trunk on, for instance, a D-Link switch, it would be called a tag port and not a trunk port. And this is because of the way multiple VLANs are carried across trunk ports. For instance, on this trunk link between this switch and this switch, we need to be able to carry VLANs one, two, and three. So basically the trunk port is not assigned to any VLAN, but it's defined as a trunk. So it's just defined as a trunk, meaning it can carry more than one VLAN. So when a message comes in from a port, for instance, this port on VLAN three, the switch knows that the message came in from a port that's assigned to VLAN 3. And if it needs to send it across to this other device on VLAN 3, what you would do is you would send it out the trunk port, but it's going to tag the message way to VLAN 3. The reason why it's tagged is so that when it gets to this other switch, the switch is coming in from a trunk port and it knows that it's supposed to respect it for a tag. And then it sees that it comes in on VLAN 3 and so it checks and says, okay, I don't have VLAN 3 on my switch, but I have a trunk port that carries VLAN 3 traffic. So I will send it out my trunk port to this other switch. And at this point, it's still the tag still remains there. So when this other switch sees it, it also sees that it comes in from a trunk port with a tag of VLAN 3. And then when it finds the correct destination for the MAC address, which is this port, it sends it out this port, but before to send it out, it takes off the tag and just sends out the frame to this device. What that really means is that the device has no clue it's on any VLAN. So computers don't know that they are on VLAN 1 or VLAN 2 or VLAN 3. 
the tagging of VLANs is actually done on the switches. And we are going to look at that in detail in the next video. So tagging is done on the switches, while the computers just send packets. And tagging is done through a standard that is called 802.1Q. There used to be another standard, which was ISO, that was created by Cisco, but now it's been phased away. So now we just have the open source Ethernet trunking standard, which is 802.1Q. So we're going to look at trunking and tagging and how you can replicate VLANs and an other advanced features in the next video. So in this video, we have been able to look at the origin of VLANs, why VLANs were introduced to segment the LAN. We also looked at the functions of VLANs for logical segmentation, for segmentations of broadcast domains, for security, and for quality of service. And we've also been able to look at how VLANs work on a switched network and how switches use tagging to decide where to send the frame based on the VLAN configuration of the switches. Thank you very much for watching.